Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tip Tut. Today, we're taking a look at this cool unfolding map technique in After Effects. Now, we do delve into the world of 3D here, but only very briefly, uh, and it's very simple. So it's nothing really to worry about. Um, so let's jump right in then. Essentially, what we have here is a composition, uh, inside of which there is another composition, uh, which is made up of five more compositions, believe it or not, each of which is a segment of map, which is a 3D layer that is pinned to the edge of the previous map, which then we adjust the position and orientation of said pieces and it unfolds. So that's the breakdown. Um, but if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry, it will in a minute. Let's get started. Uh, we create a new composition. I'll just call this a map. Um, 920, 60 frames per second, 10 seconds is fine. Um, we just want that to fit there. And we want to drop in our map image. So in here, I literally just have a quick image of a map, just a JPEG. Now, it's not super important, but it does make your life easier if it has a easy to divide width. So this map is 2000 pixels wide, for example. Just makes your life a little bit easier when it comes to the important bits in a minute. Drop that into your composition and you can scale it down if you'd like so that you will have it on the size that your final map is going to be on screen. Then all you need to do is right click and pre-compose that. We'll call this map one and you'll see why in a minute. Just hit OK. Now, if you pop inside map one, you'll see that our composition is automatically just the size of that layer. That's why you drop it into a composition straight away because um, it makes it a bit easier for you. So now you need to decide how many times your map is going to fold. Uh, I think an odd number works best, five or seven. I think the last one had five, but we'll mainly do this one. Uh, let's try an even number, see how that works out. So you're gonna wanna bring up a calculator um, and just do 2000, which is the width of the map, divided by, let's do five segments, make it nice and easy, which obviously gives us a width now of 400. So we need to just right click composition settings and change the width of this composition to 400. And as you see, that cuts off the outskirts of the map. Now, if we pin our um, anchor point of the map layer to the left and we go to position and we hit the um, X translation to be zero, you can see already where I'm going with this. This has given us the first section of our map nice and easy. So we have map one now up there. All we want to do is duplicate that for each section of our map. So you want five of them. So we're going to have map two. Uh, in this folder, I have other compositions already. That's why that one defaulted to map six there. But yours should just actually just default to map two, map three, map four automatically when it comes to naming. Um, so in map two, then bring that up. You just want the X, X position of your layer to be at 400. Uh, sorry, at negative 400. And what that does is that, push that pushes that map left 400 pixels, giving you the next quote unquote section um, of the map that you need. Now that's great, we'll duplicate that one and we'll call it map three. And we'll do the same thing, negative 800. One more time, map four. Uh, open it up and it is negative 1200. And then one last time again, duplicate that up. Map five, negative 1600. Now I think I've actually done this slightly wrong. Nope, I got it perfect. Um, so you can see there that even though the original size was 2000, even though we uh, shrunk it down to less than 2000, the original size of the composition is 2000 still, even though this is now slightly smaller when it was full, if that makes sense. Um, so we now have all of our sections nice and easy. Inside our map composition, we have map one. So what we need to do is drop the other four in there, like so. Um, Notice that the scale of that one is a bit smaller. So let's put it something nice, easy, like 75, um, just to make our, our lives a bit easier. And we'll put the scale of the rest of these to 75 as well. OK, now the only thing you need to do is grab all of your layers, move the anchor point to the left hand um, section of it. Um, and if you wanted to do this with maths, you could actually make it a bit easier on yourself. If you put them in the original scale, uh, you can then just hit P to bring up all the positions stick them all at zero, uh, and then just increment by 400. So for example, map two would be on a position of uh, 400 pixels, map three, 800, map four, 1200, and map five, 1600. 
So what we've achieved now is we have that exact same image, but divided into five segments. So the next section then is to understand how we're going to get this to move as if it was attached to here, how we're going to get this as if to move as if it was attached to here, etc. And that's actually really, really easy. Um, you want to take your map to click on it and move over to this pick whip here and click and drag that over the name of map one and do that incrementally for each section. Map three goes to map two, map four goes to map three and map five goes to map four. And what that means is when I scale down or position or rotate anything on map one, the rest of those sections will follow it. Now, technically, five is falling, four, four is three, three to two, and two to one. But because everything leads back to the root of map one, everything is now adjusted with that layer. And that makes it perfect for us because then when we position, excuse me, then when we position these in roughly the center and we turn them into 3D layers by taking this 3D box here and clicking and dragging down, um, you'll notice that when we bring up our rotation tools here, and we change the orientation, we can now get a 3D oriented object on our stage, which is exactly what we need. So you are gonna to wanna to bring up the uh, orientation keyframes on each of these layers. So hit them all, hit R, and then I'll click on the orientation keyframe on the watch and press U twice. Uh, and that'll drop out every other um, unkeyframed effect and leave you only with the orientation, which is totally fine. So you're going to want to change the X value of orientation, which is the first one until your map is slightly angled like so, just so you can see it. And you're going to want to decide that this is your finishing point. This is where you want your map to end up essentially. So on position one, um, you leave a keyframe and then you move however long you want the animation to last. I think I'm on 60 frames per second. So one, two, three, four, five, six is one second, correct? So maybe after three seconds, maybe push it all the way to five, just so that you can see a bit easier. You want to drop down another selection of keyframes. So at the moment, there's no animation, but we have two sets of keyframes that we want to animate between. Nice and easy. So now we want to choose what position one is going to be. So in position one, we want the orientation for the Y axis of the first piece of map to be a nice, easy number that we can remember perhaps negative 60 or positive 60. That sounds about right. So now we need to compensate the rest of those um, segments in order for them to fold correctly. So map two, for example, if we put that to, back to zero, um, sorry, not back to zero, sorry, uh, back to um, 60, negative 60, to compensate for the 60 that we've done here, uh, that makes it um, flat, okay? So, uh, like so. So obviously if you think 360 degrees is the same as zero, so if you go to negative 60, that gives you an actual degree of 300, if that makes sense, it's just like a circle, okay? Now that makes it flat, we don't actually want it flat. We want it the same degree of rotation, but the other side. So what you actually want is 240 or negative 120. Um, and that compensates for that, okay? Now go through and put this one to positive 120. Uh, excuse me, That's like so, um, yeah, 120 positive, like that. And the next one is negative 120, which is actually the same as 240. So you can see why the making a nice easy number to remember is quite important in this case. Um, and then this one to negative 100 and 20 like that okay so now we have our folded section of map that flattens out um, and that's pretty much all there is to it apart from there's a few beautification things that we can do for example i don't think that's quite folded enough so if you want it to be absolute you could go all the way up to 90 which puts it vertical meaning this one if you twisted it all the way down that would then be 180 okay and then this one would be 90 uh, excuse me, this one would be uh, 180. So the rest of these would actually just be 180, um, which makes it a bit easier on you. Okay, and that's a map that's completely folded up. Um, and you can see that you actually get, because you haven't done the negatives, orientation takes the shortest route, um, which depending on where it started, affects the unfolding of the map. So there you've actually got this weird kind of unfolding section like that. Um, which is where the negative 180 and positive 180 comes into play. 
although they are the same value, it changes the direction at which it approaches it. Okay, um, so for example, if I put this up to 80, uh, meaning this one would then be 220, this one would then be 140, even though that's the same angle, if that makes sense. Um, 220 and 140, because it changes the direction of it. Okay, and then it just flattens out. So as you can see, the angle from which you approach the angle that you're aiming to end up on is quite important. Um, but apart from that, it's very simple. So 60 tends to be a good bet. Uh, and then what you can also do is just create a position keyframe on here. Give it maybe one and a half seconds. Same position keyframe again, go back to the first one and push it off screen. Then give yourself a nice bit of easing. Um, maybe something like 50% in and out. And as you can see, we are good to go. Close that area, trim it and preview. And just wait for it to RAM preview so you can see the thing in all its finished glory. And that should be it. So bam, there you go. Slides in and unfolds. Perfect. That's really all there is to it. Um, it's just a little bit of maths to begin with and understanding basic 3D layers. As long as you get that, then you'll be totally fine. So thanks very, very much for watching, everybody. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, that's great. There's more on the way. If you didn't, let me know, and uh, I'll do my best to improve for next time. So thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.